used to some of the extra symbols that we didn't learn through the um, classes, the basic classes. Uh, if you can review probably also the last lesson where I do talk about these uh, symbols. Uh, we'll, I'm going to try to read slowly and explain some of these as I go. We'll start from the top right. Vahaballahu. First of all, this is Hamzatul Wasl. It's an alif with this symbol. What this is, it's a bridge like we explained. If you're reading from right to left, going by this alif, you just ignore it totally as if it's not there and you bridge this, the letter before it, to the letter after it. So then you say, Zahabal, Bal, the lamb after it. You jump from the bat to the lamb right away. Zahabal, Lahu. Lahu. Here first, the first lamb is ignored. It doesn't have any accents on top of it or below it. So you really don't really pronounce it. You're pronouncing the second lamb with a Shedda. So instead of saying two lambs, it's actually a Shedda on the second one. And also the lamb is a light letter, like we studied, it's a la, you don't say la. La is a light letter, except in the name of Allah, it becomes a heavy letter. And it also becomes, uh, even the name of Allah becomes Allah, a light name. The name of Allah itself be becomes light again, if the word before it, ends with a kasra. So if there's a word before the name of Allah or a letter before the name of Allah with a kasra, the name of Allah becomes Allah. For example, when we eat or when we recite anything, we say Bismillahi. Lahi, that's the name of Allah. You said Bismi. The meme has a kasra right before the, the name of Allah. So you say, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. You don't say Bismi Allahu, or you don't say Bismillahu, no, or Bismillahi. You say Bismillahi. So here, in this case, there's no kasra. So the name of Allah is a heavy pronunciation of the lamb. Vahaballahu. Also, in the name of Allah, it is assumed there is an alif after the lamb. Otherwise, you would pronounce it as Vahaballahu. Vahaballahu. But there is actually a lamb, I pointed out here. It's an alif after the lamb that you don't see it, but it's assumed to be there. Vahaballahu. Binurihim. I just highlighted this to say that in our lessons the sukun or the silent accent was kind of circular. In the mushafs it's slightly different, it's not really a circle. I just wanted to, you know, get your attention to it to, to know that this is actually a sukun. We'll re repeat from here. Binurihim. وَتَرَكَهُمْ Notice the movement from light letter to heavy letter back to light. وَتَرَكَهُمْ Not وَتَرَكَهُمْ وَتَرَكَهُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتٍ If there is a small alif on top of something, in general in the Quran, any time you see two letters on top of each other, you always pronounce the one that is on top. You ignore the one that is below. In this case, it's not really two letters on top of each other, but there's a letter above a connection. So you assume that there's actually an alif here. Why is there an alif? Because that's how the Prophet ﷺ used to pronounce this word. But it was written as such. So... We don't change anything of how the Quran was written, so we kept the real word how it was. This is actually 
لا يبصرون there's a shadda here on the lamb this is because of a tajweed rule that you're gonna learn in higher classes higher level classes I put it in red all the shaddas right here in the beginning you don't pronounce them for now at this level you don't pronounce them you assume that they don't exist because you will never have a word that actually starts with a shadda this is only a a tajweed symbol it's uh, just added again to help people who who are doing tajweed to pronounce something correctly i'm just gonna show you how we read it without the rule of tajweed how we learned it until now and then with the rule of tajweed so that you have an idea ظُلُمَاتٍ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ This is without Tajweed. With Tajweed ظُلُمَاتٍ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ So in Tajweed there is actually a Shadda. It's just the way you pronounce it. More details in the, uh, the next class inshallah. صُمُّمْ Summum. This meme, this usually is actually a tanween. There's two dhamma in real Arabic. Is two dhamma, but because of a tajweed rule again, they are telling you that in this case you have to switch from saying summun, the noon sakin ends with the noon silent noon, say summum, so replace it with a meme. So that's why you say summum. So you literally just read the top, the top instead. Book, mun, om, yun. Again, these are two symbols representing the same thing. The un sound. This is tenween al dhamma. So this is the same. They are. They look different again because of. They are trying to help people reading with tajweed rules to realize that this is pronounced in a slightly different manner than here. In real tajweed, this is pronounced as such. Book mun fahum. So there's a big difference. Fahum la yarjiuna aw kasayibin. This is an extension. It's also telling people who are doing Tajweed that you probably can extend it even longer than the normal Alif. Actually, in this case, you have to extend it not more than the normal uh, Alif. But as I'm saying, it's just a Tajweed uh, visual aid. Fihi. ظلمات ورعد وبرق يجعلون أصابعهم في آذانهم من الصواعق حذر الموت of course, we're going to learn also later on. Whenever we stop, we just usually put sukun on, on the last letter. So here, if I stopped on al-mawti, it should end with hadhar al-mawt. Silent letter. It's no longer pronounced with the kasra, but with the silent, with the sukun. But that's, uh, we're going to talk about this later, inshallah. Wallahu. Muhitum bil kafirina yakadul barku. If I wanted to stop after yakadu and start again, I would say yakadu, I would stop. And if I want to start with this, I have to put a hamza. So I would say al barku. Because it's no longer a bridge. It's not bridging two things if you're starting over uh, right there. So if I'm bridging, let's go back to bridging. Yakadul barku yakhtafu 
absarahum i missed uh, this symbol before these symbols right here one two and there's a third one not represented in this uh, piece these are uh stop stops uh, symbols like to tell you that you can stop here this says you can stop 50 50 meaning you can stop and you can keep going in your reading the verse when you're reading the verse you can either keep going after al mauti and keep going and say wallahu muhaytum bil kafirin or you can stop after al maut and then keep going with this symbol it's saying it's better to actually keep going but still you can stop over here there's a third symbol not represented here that says you have to actually stop and then keep going Kullama adaa lahum mashaw fihi wa idha azlama alayhim qamu One last tip, uh, the noon and the mim in many of the mushafs also because they're helping you with uh, pronouncing the correct tajweed rules they might have the meme and the noon without any accents on top or below so that means you have to always assume there's a sukun right like this one adhanihim there's a sukun really in the correct arabic if you're reading arabic it's a meme with sukun okay just like this one meme 